Well, uh, it's, uh, it's great to, to be here and to be able to uh, speak uh, with Peter. Uh, Peter, you didn't know that uh, I did not that know that song. song. So, yep. standing on this mountaintop, yep. looking just how far we've come. Now, I wonder if that's a, a phrase that might resonate with, the Welsh with you valleys. at all. Well, not with the Welsh <laughs> Valleys, but uh, in as much as... Now, I would guess that over the last few weeks and months, now, you've probably been doing a fair bit of looking back at yeah. what God has done in your lives over yeah. the last, uh, well, no, over time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, this weekend has been that condensed into, what, 24 hours uh, of meeting people from 30, 30 years of, of, of ministry, yeah. uh, really, um, four or five churches. So for us, it's been an interesting weekend uh, as we've had that vantage point looking back um, seeing how God has shaped us for ministry through each chapter, how God has used us uh, amongst those churches, and uh, when all the coaches were, were going yesterday afternoon, it, it was it, strange emotions. You get very mm. stretched yeah. uh, as you sort of look back over those years. Yeah. So I, I guess you've, you've maybe had a, a little bit of a time of looking backwards, but you know, you'll have had for some time you know, one eye to the future. Yeah. And I guess part of your role now is, is sort of looking forward and uh, sort of taking that big picture view along with the elders and trying to discern where God wants to lead us yeah. as a church. Yeah, and that's a challenge, isn't it, Andy? I mean, I, I, I think I need, with the other leaders uh, here, to pause, um, to take stock, to evaluate, to pray through we have a ministry plan in, in Lansdowne that's, you know, that's been around, I know, for a, a couple of years or maybe more. We have a, the prospect of this wonderful new facility in the next few years. We have an interim to manage uh, in probably 18 months' time when we're sort of going to be in the wilderness somewhere wandering around the conurbation. Um, so, yes, lots of things to be thinking about, praying through. Yeah. But just right now, I want to try and be still and uh, not rush uh, to hasty um, perspectives, learn from what's been happening here over the years. It's just great to be joining the journey because yeah. this is, you know, this is a journey together yeah. um, for all of us as we as we take the next so, step. So, in part, a, a case of you know, taking stock, listening, yep. and uh, yeah, starting to, to work through the. Yep. What would you say are the, are the sort of uh, your main sort of personal challenges in the short term? I think it is to try and get a measure of what's been happening here over the years. Clearly, it's a church with a great history, 137-year history. And I think I was saying yesterday that all of us, you know, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, and uh, we want to build on those values, those mm. core values of the church over the years. Uh, the same message, the same hope, the same gospel. And yet, if you don't adapt, you will die. And so we have to adapt who we are and what we are to the changing context of the 21st century. And I guess what I want, therefore, to try and reflect on seriously is what that might look like. You know, my role, along with that of others, is to, is to try by the grace of God and by the help of God's Spirit to, to see where we're headed with that glorious message that is a constant, and yet we need to adapt how we do church to face the uh, context that we're in now. Okay. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I, w I was taken by Lindsay Brown's uh, uh, talk uh, yesterday afternoon. And, um, and two of his watchwords were servanthood and humility. And uh, so, yeah, what are your thoughts? Yeah, is, it, is it difficult to be a, a strong and effective leader and at the same time retain those qualities? It's a challenge. Of course, it's a challenge. I mean, we have, all of us, we have the Lord Jesus as our great example, who was strength personified. But strength with gentleness, toughness with tenderness, mm -hmm. and that's a, a unique combination, clearly, in, in, in the Lord Jesus. But it's something that every leader, indeed every Christian, should be aspiring to, uh, me amongst them. So, servant-hearted leadership is the biblical character or quality or template um, hopefully for my leadership and for that of the other leaders who will lead with me, you know, including uh, our, our youth leadership. So, so it, again, it, this is something that we can do together as we exhibit and model servant leadership. And I think that, that 
that we mustn't mistake um, you know, uh, weakness for meekness. I, I think leadership needs to be strong and clear and decisive and sometimes make the tough calls. But to do that with a spirit of grace, compassion, patience and understanding. Um, so I think there's something that we can pray for each other and especially for our leaders that we'll have that, that Christ-like combination of, of, of strength with sensitivity. Yeah. Um, so you've had a week, a week now in the office so yeah. far, so you've had a week to get your feet under the table. And to get lost uh, around <laughs> these buildings. Yeah. So what have you learned so far in, that, learned in that short the, period of time? I've learned that this is the labyrinth. Uh, I said this morning in, in the sermon, it's a bit like Doctor Who's TARDIS. You sort of open a door and find another door and then you find another door. So I've been enjoying that. And um, when you arrive somewhere for the first time, you see everything with a fresh pair of eyes. So again, this morning, I, I, I told the congregation that I, I found this, um, this, this poem called Don't Quit um, above the fire exit notice with the guy trying to run away, you know. And, and that just struck me as a, an interesting kind of perspective. So things like that just hit you uh, this week, come out, yeah. uh, just, just new things, things that I guess you've walked past and seen for, for years. And yet I'm, I'm coming amongst you and, and they're just fresh for me. And, and some things make me smile and, yeah. and some things and challenge I, I, me. And I guess you've, you've also learned that the climate down here on the English Riviera is a, no, a bit different from what you're used to, I would think. <laughs> well, I, I have lots of people who follow me on, on Facebook and Twitter. And, and somebody said just this afternoon, it, it's been, there's been four glorious cloudless days of blue sky in Cardiff. So... So uh, th I think there's a bit of competition Take your word going for it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been, the last week has been great. Uh, we've really it's enjoyed good, that. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how do you think you'll, you'll be spending your downtime? Uh, how do you like to relax? How do I like to relax? Well, uh, I'll be spending a Monday uh, relaxing. Tomorrow we've got breakfast in the Marriott with some people who've come from Cardiff. Mm -hmm. uh, with the, with, with the, with the uh, uh, friends for the welcome service. So spending a bit of time with them. Um, probably in the afternoon I might look at the garden and, uh, <laughs> and get my leaf sucker out and, and, and use that a bit. Um, I'm enjoying that actually, Andy. I, I, it's something that, you know, gardening leave is what they give you when, when you move from one job to another. Well, I've had a month's gardening leave and the garden now is in pretty good shape. Um, so I, I'll try and keep that going um, as part of my day off. Come around to ours as well, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Leaves are not our favourite, uh, not our favourite thing. Uh, Peter, tell us how can we best pray for you as a, as a family? Thanks. Pray that we will make those adjustments, um, the, the cultural adjustments. Um, you know, it's the same language here in, in Bournemouth as it is in Cardiff. Only there's Welsh, of course, spoken in parts of Cardiff. So, but genuinely those adjustments, mm -hmm. that we will, uh, um, we will look at um, building friendships and good relationships, pray for my working relationships with the staff mm -hmm. um, and with the, uh, the elders. We meet for the first time uh, as elders on Tuesday and then with the managing trustees afterwards. So those are important occasions when leaders get together to pray and think through the vision of the church going forward. Uh, pray for me personally that I'll know how to prioritize, horrible word, but you know, I'll know what to focus on. Uh, I've got lots of people who, who want to see me, which is great. I've got appointments with church leaders right across the conurbation, um, and appointments with, with people in Southampton and London, and just getting a sense of, of what I've been called here to do. Mm. Uh, church is looking to partner with us in ministry, um, in gospel projects. Um, a whole plethora of, of stuff in the tray. I just need to know what God's calling me to. Yeah. I don't want to replace one <laughs> tray of busyness simply with another tray of busyness. I want to know how to use my time effectively with people, with projects. You know, there's lots and lots of things a church like this could do. But I want to find out with you as a, as, as a leadership, what has God wired us up to do uniquely? What's, what's our USP as a, as, as a as a, as a church organization, what are our unique you know, features and how do we build on those for the future? Super, thank you very much, Peter.